Welcome to season one of Top Crop. We found out that the ground is alive. Trying to get done a little quicker and trying to simplify things a little bit. You know, there's only so much money to go around. I look for big wins. Well, I think since uh, he's been at the Commodity Classic, I'll start there. Um, got to see a, a lot of the viewers there at, at, uh, at the Commodity Classic down in Orlando. Uh, got to catch up with a lot of great farmers down there and always love that show. But uh, since we got back, we've been wet and cold. It's kind of been a struggle. Typically when we get back from that show, I like starting putting on anhydrous ammonia and we weren't able to. We had to wait till um, I think it was about April. We finally got in, in the fields. We got done with that in about five, six days. Um, for those that don't know, we use about 75% of our nitrogen need through anhydrous ammonia through a blue jet um, toolbar and it's all on 20 inch rows. We can pull two double tanks. So when me and Junior hook up, that's about a semi load every single time. So it takes a lot to do it, but it gets done. And we like the job that it does. So then we were stuck in a pretty big conundrum. This is where, uh, you know, that meme you always seen from the bike shop where the kid's throwing the chair at his dad because they're all mad. That's what I mean my dad was like this year. Um, it was ready to go. The soil was a little wet, so we were cold, but they were calling for three days of warm weather, 70 degrees. But the problem is that Thursday night into Friday, they were calling for up to three and a half inches of rain and lows back into the 30s, frost and freeze. So <clears throat> how do you sit on your hands when everybody else around you is planting and putting it in the ground and you're outside in 72, 73 degrees? And that's where me and dad was really having an internal and external battle about what we should be doing. Um, so we went and tried it. We did about 20 acres of beans. And once you felt that furrow, it was still mucky underneath. Our, our heavy clay, Ohio soils, just doesn't like to get rid of the moisture. Um, it was so cold in the mornings, it's bringing up all the moisture. And it was taking forever for it to dry out. It, it was just a fight. Do we start beans? Do we don't? Because trust me, I'm a big one on planting beans early. But I also don't want to shoot myself in the foot. So. I felt like I was talking out of both sides of my mouth because I'm sure you guys have heard me talk, planting beans first, early, 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 they can take the stress. And now I'm sitting here telling myself, my operation, whoa, let's hold back on this, let's wait. So really felt like I was talking out of both sides of my mouth. But when we dug up the beans, they were just laying in muck. Uh, we was even having trouble getting the furrow to close. And me and dad probably walked the field for, felt like two hours trying to make this decision. We even brought the cultivators back in to rework it to see if that'd make any, any bit of difference. And we was just bringing up chunks of mud. So we made a collective decision to wait. And we can throw in a lot of seed pretty quick. We can cover about 1,000 to 1,200 acres a day. So we end up waiting until the temperatures were right. Um, I've already went and looked at those beans. Almost every single one came up. So who knows? I mean, you try and you wait to do you know, everything which you feel is correct. And we did things that we felt was extremely wrong and the beans still came up and looked great. So it goes back to damned if you do, damned if you don't. Um, but I, I'm really excited about almost all of our beans have finally emerged already. Uh, we just finished up beans on Wednesday night. Um, we switched right to corn on Thursday and today's Monday and we're gonna wrap up. So we've been hitting it hard. We had one rain day on Saturday. We got two tents. For all the rain I've been wishing to miss us, I'm ready for you to come back, Mother Nature. So feel free to rain if you want. We're calling for uh, mid, mid 80s now from here on out this week. Uh, I don't think any rain until the following week, but uh, we got plenty of soil moisture right now. So I think we're gonna be okay as long as we don't start missing the rains.
So right now we just loaded up Pivot Bio. The Proven 40 product, mm -hmm. which is very cool. We're out looking at one of our Pivot Bio plots. I like the looks of it. It's not leaching away in the groundwater. It's not running off when we get a hard, heavy rain. Not bad, huh? Not bad. The Proven 40 is doing its job. It's that missing link that keeps my plant where it needs to be. Pivot Bio passed the test. So I feel far, like. the Pivot Bio is checking all the boxes. Yeah. So. Next, probably, will be a V10 Valtima application. It's so much more than fungicide. It goes above and beyond disease control. Really like the BASF fungicides. It's a stress mitigator, it's plant health. We have applied a toad on this farm, you know. Done a great job for me. Definitely money made. Yeah, absolutely. Money. See how green this still is? That's right. It's never too early to be talking about a program anymore. One of the other things that we like about the Haney test is down here. So we actually have a live read on microbes in the ground with the Haney test. So we have a soil respiration. Um, we found out in, in the early eight, or late 1800s, early 1900s, um, that the ground actually is alive. Microbes consume organic material, and when they do that, they release CO2 gas. So when we read the CO2 gas, we can actually see how much, how much is that ground working. So right now, this ground is functioning at 66%. Uh, this is percent MAC. So this is the food source, the organic carbon, and they're consuming about 66% of it. That's not terrible, that's not great. We have farms that range anywhere from 80s and 90s. Um, some of our highest functioning farms that we get a lot of yield off of, we'll see them in the 150 to 200s. So the organic carbon on this test is your checking account. And this is what you're paying to, to release nutrients. If you're seeing percent MAC over 100% and you're using all your checking account, which would be the organic carbon, you'll actually see microbial mass start breaking down organic matter. Um, some of our highest functioning ground, we can see a, a really good gain over the winter with cover crops and increasing organic matter. And then throughout the growing season through our soil test, we'll actually see that organic matter start to break down if we see percent MAC over 100%. But these are just some of the different things that we look at on the Haney test. Uh, the biggest thing for us is nitrogen. Most testing does not test for nitrogen at all, but the Haney test looks at nitrate, ammonium, and organic nitrogen. This is a bean field, so we're not really needing a nitrogen credit. But to give you an idea, we picked up 47.4 pounds of nitrogen with the Haney test that we wouldn't have gotten in a conventional soil sample. And as a farmer, that's saving me about $48 an acre on nitrogen alone. So you take a Midwest farmer that's farming a thousand acres of corn, they're gonna save around $47,000 on nitrogen if they were seeing the same results on that test. $47,000 is enough to look at a different soil test. Running a two by two by two system by Yetter um, on the back of the row unit in an infro fertilizer. The next one down, uh, we cut out our two by two system and just ran in furrow and then we're leaving a, a strip. And then the next one down, uh, we didn't do any of our fertility at all on the planter, so it's just straight planted it. Uh, no in furrow and no two by two. When we're looking at the micronutrients and the macronutrients that we're using for a crop, we were doing tissue samples for years and we would apply what our test was saying to, to put on there. And we kept coming up maybe right at adequate. Um, most of the time it was a little bit below. But if you look at these extractants, one of the things that really showed off for us and, and kind of was a proving fact is looking at boron. Um, we started paying attention to boron, and if you look at this farm, boron was showing up at 0.33 pounds on a conventional Melick test. Um, we started looking, uh, working with Regen Ag Labs, and one of the things that we liked from the laboratory is they do a hot water extraction. And the biggest thing that we started seeing with the hot water extraction is on a hot water extraction, we were actually only seeing about 0.16 on boron. Now we started doing check strips about two years ago where we would apply a quarter of a pound based on the meal at the conventional test and then we would apply half a pound based on the hot water extraction and that was the very first time that we were actually seeing full season that we were maintaining adequate boron levels by using this hot water extraction method. 
Um, then we started looking at molybdenum and, and other factors that we could also do these hot water extractions with. It cost us about four bucks a test for us to do this test. Um, but where we were putting on, say, two more dollars an acre in boron and paying for a four dollar test, it was translating into anywhere from about four to six bushel in beans. So that's making us additional 40 to 60 dollars an acre where we're spending six to get it. So we're, we're typically seeing an eight to 10X investment, return on investment, um, by looking at these different extraction methods and really trying to hone in what is actually gonna be available to that plant. I farmed for eight years before we did that, and that was the first time I ever had soybeans actually achieve 60 pounds per bushel. Most years we were getting like 52, 54, 56 pound uh, bushel soybeans. And when we started doing these hot water extractions, that's the first time we started getting close that's and hitting those 60 pound, that 60 pound mark. So if you look at the ground while we're walking, you'll see, you'll see that lithos carbon that we put out here. Okay. So I mean like, so you've got bare ground here. We put 12 tons to the acre here. So that just shows you how fine of a product that we're applying. I think it was 92% of this product passes through a hundred sieve and um, having a product that has been screened and sifted and a high quality product that'll, that'll be carried into the ground is, is really critical for us adjusting some of these, these deficiencies and, and changing our pH with this product. So right now we just loaded up Pivot Bio. The Proven 40 product, mm -hmm. which is very cool. We're out looking at one of our pivot bio plots. I like the looks of it. It's not leaching away in the groundwater. It's not running off when we get a hard, heavy rain. Not bad, huh? Not bad. The Proven 40 is doing its job. It's that missing link that keeps my plant where it needs to be. Pivot bio passed the test. So I feel far, like. the pivot bio is checking all the boxes. Yeah. So. So in typical farmer action, last field, last day, we blow an O-ring to my center vac here. And you can see the O-rings all chewed up right there. Make sure side let go. Never good when you blow a rubber. That's how accidents happen. Right. Yep, so Junior already had this problem earlier on in the season. So he already had an O-ring with him, a spare one. So I just had to walk down the road and get one from him. Well, we don't always try to show our rubbers, but Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do to get things done. All right, we'll find out if it works. Like a lot of places, I mean, especially here in Ohio, we can have all the soil types in one field. So that's why available rate seeding works for us so well. There's planners for it, but I mean, we don't have the need. We know we can control it by population. It's like in this white ground here, we're gonna drop all the way down to 37. Where we just came from in the black ground, it's gonna be all the way up to 42. So we can kind of control it that way. And you can see the spacing between them, so you can definitely see the population difference already. I'm not seeing any quicker emergence from being chisel plowed compared, no? 
Right there, right there. Fun just to be able to see where we chisel plowed on the outside here. And see how tough it is. And you can see how that top crust. You see how he's right there, but he couldn't push through. Our beanie babies are struggling. If you look from the laneway or from the road, you think, man, this field looks good. You know, you see the green tent across it, and then you get here on it, and you just start seeing all these misses everywhere. Now, beans I've learned you have to be patient on because you can come out here a week later and every single one of them will be up. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be a lot more um, root growth throughout the season. Going to pay attention to that. We did a lot of side-by-side -side fields, uh, straight no-till, vertical till, and then chisel plowed. So right now we're just checking for emergence seeing no emergence difference right 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 now but uh we'll continue to monitor this throughout the year and look for a root root process to see if uh make sure we don't get any flat roots going from where we didn't ch chisel plow so this will be fun to follow it'll be fun to watch throughout the year but so far i'm happy i uh, just finished up planting two days ago we're done getting to watch my corn pop up in rows beans are already up things are looking good Bring on 2023. Next probably will be a V10 Valtima application. It's so much more than fungicide. It goes above and beyond disease control. Really like the BASF fungicides. It's a stress mitigator. It's plant health. We have applied a toad on this farm, you know. Done a great job for me. Definitely money made. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely you see money. how green this still is? That's right. It's never too early to be talking about a program anymore. So right now we just loaded up Pivot Bio. The Proven 40 product, mm -hmm. which is very cool. We're out looking at one of our Pivot Bio plots. I like the looks of it. It's not leaching away in the groundwater. It's not running off when we get a hard, heavy rain. Not bad, huh? Not bad. The Proven 40 is doing its job. It's that missing link that keeps my plant where it needs to be. Pivot Bio passed the test. So I feel far, like. the Pivot Bio is checking all the boxes. Yeah. So. Uh, this is a planter that we just built this winter. Um, one of the key features on it are these uh, Yetter Stalk Devastator cover crop rollers. They're on a torsion block assembly that gives us flexibility. So if we go over uneven terrain, if you know, we're going over terraces, um, you know, land that's not perfectly flat. It gives us that flexibility having three of these bars across the planter so we're keeping even roll, uh, roll down. Um, we're also getting crimp crimping action in the small grain of the cover crop. Uh, we don't terminate all the legumes, but there's not a crimper out there that really satisfies that. Uh, we do run two two by two in furrow tanks. Um, we custom built, uh, all of these tank systems, we've got really good recirculation on them. We run 12 volt electric pumps, so we can, uh, we can essentially dial in our rates in the cab and uh, change it on the go if we need to. Running V-set, V-drive meters. Uh, this is what our Yetter 2x2 system looks like. We used to run a slotted disc, and um, we found that these smooth, blade, these smooth blades actually penetrate better and we get less row vibration. Um, on our load cells. So we changed over to these this season. So this is how we're injecting on both sides of the row. Uh, this farm here is getting a blend of potassium thiosulfate, 11370 30, mixed with 32% with some humix and uh, some micro and macro elements in it is going in the two by two. Inferro will be our four biologicals with our Inferro fertilizer um, using the Inferro Max on corn and the Diamond K on beans. These are actually pretty cool. This is a, a poly tire instead of being rubber. And uh, if you're going over residue and cover crops and, and, and previous crop residue, honestly, I don't know if I'll wear these things out in my lifetime. This poly has held up tremendously. And then the cool thing that we updated this season is we went to this new style of Yetter closing wheel. And so we can actually change the degree angle and the pitch of our closing wheels 
Um, so if we're running in really dry conditions, we can actually take those closing wheels and we can sweep them back to where we're pulling that dry, loose dirt over the furrow and making sure we're getting good closure so we're not wicking out moisture. If we're in really wet conditions, we can angle them back the other way and therefore we're not compacting that, that wet soil over the top of the seed trench so we're not you know, seeing as much crusting that way. So this has been a pretty cool update that we're running on half of the planter this season. And I'll say one of the tricks that uh, I learned from uh, Blake Vince up in Canada that a lot of no-tillers probably don't know about is uh, sandbags. So if you're using no-till and you're having issues with getting good ground contact on your row units, we actually started running sandbags in our insecticide boxes and uh, that's really helped us out with our down pressure and maintaining constant ground contact uh, when we're running in these, uh, these no-till conditions. So, I mean, you can see the ground, even on this farm, we've got pretty good cracks in the ground because it's so dry. Um, we're still gonna get the crop in. Probably this corn here, inch and three quarters to two and, a, two and a quarter inches deep. And even in these dry conditions, we can still make that work having just an extra 50 pounds on each one of these row units and uh, just having it concealed in the insecticide box. It's just another, another tip that we learned along the way. The benefit of being able to, to meet people, talk with people, hear other ways of farming, that's, that's one thing it finally broke. That's one thing that, you know, David Brent passed away last week because of a car wreck that he was in in Illinois. And the one thing that I will say about, I call them regenerative farmers. Everybody got their own term of what that means, but the, the, the regenerative farmers that I have met, Jimmy Emons, Lauren Steinloggy, Michael Thompson, David Brandt, those farmers freely share their information. They want to see other farmers succeed. And I think that's why they do it is they just, they've had headaches, they've had failures, you know, we're probably 25, 30 years ahead of where we would have been if we would have done this on our own. But having those guys share their knowledge, their information, planting depths, spacing, what cover crops to use, what cover crops not to use. Like, you don't want to plant purple top turnips before a corn crop because they don't break down and your row units are going to bounce from one end of the field to the other. Uh, Nathan Louder in North Carolina saved me from that headache. And then, you know, John Pickler is here in Stanley. He's one of the guys that have shared a lot of information with us. But, you know, just looking at of how that plant is already putting on these roots in just no time at all and, and running that two by two system. You know, if you run a single two by two coulter, you typically see a massive amount of roots on one side of the plant versus where we're running it on both sides of the plant with that Yetter system, we're seeing these big, long, fibrous tap roots that are running on both sides of the plant, which just helps kick start it out to, to the right direction right off of the beginning. Um, and so, I mean, it just, I think that's the reason we just try to pay it forward. They share their information with us and we like to share it with other people. It may work in your area, it may not, but you can always try it out. I hope everybody's excited for the season this year. It's getting time where we're wrapping up planning. But if, uh, if anybody's got any questions for the show, feel free to leave us a comment. We'll be happy to uh, try to answer them and answer any production questions, soil testing, uh, what biological factors we're looking at. Uh, you know, write it in the comments and we'll try to get to everybody we can.